CompTIA ITF plus Complete Training Course. Exam Objective 6.7 Explain Business Continuity Concepts. Disaster Recovery. For the last few videos, we have been focused on fault tolerance and the many ways in which we can keep our business operations and IT infrastructure up and running. This includes the use of network, power, and data redundancies. But what if, despite all our efforts, all of our backup or contingency plans still manage to fail, leading to a halt in operations? This is where disaster recovery comes into play. While fault tolerance and system redundancies are designed to maintain operational uptime, disaster recovery is designed to step in when the worst should happen and operations go down. So what is disaster recovery? It is the process of restoring and recovering IT systems and operations after an unforeseen disruption or catastrophe. It is the emergency plan activated when all other fault-tolerant redundancy strategies fail and has the primary aim of reducing downtime. Looking a bit closer, one aspect of disaster recovery is data restoration. When a system fails, there's a risk that valuable data might be lost or become inaccessible. Data restoration is the process of retrieving this lost or inaccessible data and making it available once again. To achieve this, there are typically two primary methods. The first is to use a backup, which is a saved copy of the data, usually stored in a separate, off-site location. This backup can be loaded back into the system to replace the lost data. The second method is to switch to an alternate system where an identical copy of the data has been stored, often referred to as a replicated system. This ensures that even if one system faces issues, another standby system can take over. Another aspect of disaster recovery is prioritization, and in the midst of chaos, prioritization becomes paramount. In the face of a significant disaster, a multitude of business-critical systems could become compromised or fail entirely. Worse, reacting to such a situation often involves navigating through limited resources and tight time constraints. Therefore, a well-structured disaster recovery plan is essential. This plan should not only specify which systems need to be restored first based on their importance but also recognize the interdependencies between these systems. As an illustration, if a company's website servers rely on specific database servers to function, they might become ineffective or inoperable if those database servers are down. Recognizing and planning for such dependencies ensures a smoother recovery process. One last aspect to consider is when to restore access back to the users. Restoring access to users too early in the disaster recovery process can risk data integrity and security. Premature access might lead to further data corruption, potential data breaches, or exacerbate existing system issues, hindering the overall recovery effort. Only, after confirming the reliability of the backup or recovered system, would you grant users access and resume normal operations. It might also be beneficial to limit the number of users at first, if conditions permit, in order to ensure the system operates as expected. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.